Hi guys, welcome back to RAS Weekends. I am Red Z, and today I'm so excited to bring you another glorious video on version 0.6. And today we're going to be taking a look at the four new playable factions in the game. Now, on top of the 29 minor Greek factions, the Thracians and the Anatolians as well, there are actually going to be four new bigger, larger factions that are going to be playable from the campaign map, from the campaign start, without any file trickery. Don't get too upset about the Greeks, though, because I will be releasing a video on how to make them playable. Uh, but these are going to be playable from the start, these factions. And they're really there just to add a bit of spice into the map, mainly for the AI. Remember, they are kind of placeholder factions, guys. You can see their, uh, their icons down here if you want to gaze and guess which ones they are. But they are placeholder factions that are there to give the AI extra challenge and to fill out areas that were just filled with rebels previously. So the way you want to look at them is look at them like their other 0.5 factions that were added in. They're not remastered yet. They've not got a huge level of immersion, but they're there to play if you want to. And they're there for you to fight as an extra challenge on the campaign map in some of the more sparser regions. Now, big shout out and thank you must go to Solon de Athenas, who has provided all the unit rosters for these factions from his Rome Total Realism Anabasis mod for Rome Original. So thank you to him for these glorious unit rosters that have fit in nicely as placeholders until these factions and units get remastered. They will eventually, of course, get remastered like all the factions from the Greek update in version 0.6, but they're going through the map methodically. Remember, this update is about the Greeks. But without further ado, guys, let's get into the map. We'll show you the locations of each faction, and I will show you each faction on the map, its starting position, strengths and weaknesses, and roster. That'll be really cool indeed. So I'll see you there in a second. First things first, guys, here we are on the tactical map. Now, the four new factions are going to be on your screen now. We've got North Orange, South Orange, North Green, and South Green. I'm going to put the faction icons up. Now, comment down below what you think those factions are to start with. That would be fantastic. And let's see how many of you get it right. That's right, guys. Faction number one is the Mauryan Empire. Yes, an Indian faction in the mod. Isn't that fantastic to see? But let's hear a little bit of their history while we go around their regions. The Mauryan Empire is one of the most powerful nations, or empires, should I say, in the world in 270 BC. India, of course, is not fully represented in the mod, as we can see here. But the Mauryans are still, of course, a very considerable force on the map. Around 300 BC, the Seleucids and the Mauryans fought a brief war. But it ended up being a treaty. The Seleucids got Indian elephants and the Mauryans got Arachosia, Gedrosia, Parapamisidae, and the Indus regions, if I can speak. From there on, their dealings with the West were pretty minimal. But they were also highly influential in the rise of Buddhism, which would find its way into the Greco-Bactrian kingdom um, over here, as we can see, as well as Persia. In RAS, of course, they're a large placeholder roster, but we will go through that in time. So a really, really cool nation to be added in to the game. You actually start with 90 regions, guys. 90. If we have a look over here 90 regions to start so they start off already as a big empire even without india added into the game and you can see the predominant um, settlements are all around the indus valley down here going down the indus river and you can see quite a lot of factions in the north as well factions should i say provinces in the north but they do also have regions all the way down the coast here as we can see backing up to seleucid land so pretty much as the Morians, your main aims are going to be fighting the Seleucids. But you do have a little secret weapon. And as we can see over here, got our spy. He's in there. This little path through the uh, foothills of the Himalayas over here. That uh, is a path that you can take to go and fight Bactria. And in case you don't know, Bactria itself is a very, very, very rich area, guys. Incredibly rich. 
because pretty much half of the settlements around here have silver and gold. So this area is incredibly rich. So uh, if you want to go that way, you can. In case you want to go the other way, the Seleucids are just here. They don't have a huge amount of settlements in this region, as we can see. But that is going to be a long, drawn-out war if you decide to go against the Seleucids. But again, it's pretty much the only way you can really can go, apart from jumping across to Arabia if you want. But yeah, a really cool faction. You can just see the amount of settlements. I imagine down here the corruption will be quite bad. Yeah, pretty bad, about half down here. So you may want to move your capital of Taxilla down probably into the middle so you get equal corruption either side rather than all the corruption just down in the south. But that is completely up to you. But a really cool uh, faction nonetheless. Very nice and very, very powerful early game. Just a note, guys, these uh, these figures for the economy may change before release. The economy is still being worked on, but I have no doubt that with 90 regions, you're going to find the economy so easy to make money with this faction. A very, very powerful faction early on, which is in contrast to some of the other factions that we're going to face and going to see in this video. But let's take a look at the recruitment uh, to show you the unit roster. If I can get the higher level of that recruitment, you can see they have a relatively uh, large roster in terms of their roster. It's pretty much predominantly a light infantry roster, as we can see with uh, levy spearmen, all that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's not an amazing roster, but you do have very decent archers. So you do have the longbowmen here, which have 170 missile range and some pretty good missile attack of 10. So a decent archer option, uh, as well as these guys, the Indian Elite Guard, which are your only real good option as infantry. The rest of it is all pretty much light infantry. 17 morale, 19 melee attack and 35 defense. Not too bad. Like I say, we're not going to be going over the rosters because they will be remastered at some point, but I thought I'd just give you a brief rundown of what you might expect. Apart from that, you've got pretty not great infantry and not fantastic cavalry either. The Lancers are okay. Like, they're decent. Four, 24 and 14 is not bad with a 38 charge, but there's nothing really that special in there, and you will struggle against the Seleucid and the Bactrian rosters with a lot of your infantry not even managing to come up to the snuff of a Hoplite unit or a Theropora unit. So really, really more of a skirmish and archer roster, I've got to say, in my opinion. But a decent, decent nation, nonetheless, just because of the amount of power that you have early game with this many regions. But anyway, fantastic nation to add to the game. Let's get into nation number two. So here we are, guys, with nation number two. And maybe you guessed it. It's Nabatea, the northern green nation on the map. Now, let's hear a little bit about their history then. So at this point in time, they were a very small kingdom state, probably formed when farming and urbanization took root in this area in the early 3rd century BC. However, it would take until the 1st century BC to really change the area. They did fight off Antigonus the One-Eyed and his son in 312 BC when they attacked Petra. But in the time frame of our mod, they did grow steadily in power until they held a sizable kingdom stretching from Gaza to Bostra and down to uh, Hegra as well. They are, of course, linked to various nomadic peoples from the area. However, they weren't nomadic themselves and in time they became very Hellenized. Of course, in RAS, they start as a small faction like they were in real life at the time. So let's talk about Nabatea a little bit. You only start with three, three settlements, but you do start off with a fairly decently sized army. But unfortunately for you, this army is not really very strong at all uh, compared to some of the Hellenic units. But you can still do a lot of damage if you know what you're doing with the army. Now, you start pretty much bordering the Ptolemies. Well, you do border the Ptolemies in all of Eboda over here. But you also have the option of going and expanding into all these rebel settlements as well, if you want. However, 
I would not highly recommend that. What I would recommend you doing, I have actually played these guys in the beta. What I would recommend you doing is going into the Ptolemaic lands and starting raiding very, very quickly. Go after these settlements. Try and pick the bigger ones like Gaza, the large town, Ascalon. Go in there and destroy every single thing in there that you can. Get loaded with money and then you can really build up your nation. Um, that is that is my preferred tactic for this nation because taking the rebel settlements and going slowly is really just not going to work. What you have to do is blitz these guys, take a load of the settlements over here and just destroy them. The Ptolemies, as big as they are and as scary as they are, you can just retreat. If they come and try and take a settlement back, just retreat from it. Go find another one. Use cowardly tactics with these guys because otherwise you might not survive. Unless you want to go slowly and take these rebel settlements, which you can do, of course. But it's completely up to you. But that is my uh, favoured way of doing it. Petra, of course, is your capital. And let's have a look at Petra and the unit roster. So they do have a relatively large unit roster as you can see, but it's predominantly light infantry. We've got the Levy Spearmen, the Warriors. Uh, they do have some heavier infantry over here with the Arab Spearmen, which are okay. They're okay. And the Arab infantry, again, just okay. Not much defense there at all. So not much armor really for these guys. Uh, but they do have a few things. Their elite infantry, apart from the Hoplites, like this Nabataean infantry, sorry, apart from the Thorakitai that they get, is not even going to hold up a candle to Hoplites early game. Although they are armor-piercing, which is pretty darn good. So it's more of a shock and speedy, um, speedy roster. So that's what you should use it for. That's why you want to go raiding rather than conquering with this faction. The Thorakitai, of course, decent, decent unit. But all Thorakitai are going to be decent and probably not as decent as, say, the Seleucid or the Ptolemaic Thorakitai or the Ptolemaic Agira Speedes and Seleucid Agira Speedes. So early game, you want to be getting uh, raiding as quick as possible to get rich before the Ptolemies and the Seleucids get good units and you're, <laughs> you're going to be struggling at that point. However, they do have a flexible amount of light cavalry. We've got the Nabataean light cavalry over here. We've got Nabataean cavalry. And they do get horse archers, guys, which is fantastic. Again, the Nabataean lancers are pretty decent. 14 melee attack, 26 defense, and 40 charge. It's actually a really decent sort of, uh, sort of uh, stats there for a lancer unit. Um, and they get a lot of light cavalry with javelins as well, like we've seen these Nabataean light cavalry. And of course, if you want, you get the glorious camel warriors. How can you turn this nation up, guys, when they have glorious camel warriors? Here they are, excellent at fighting other cavalry with their 11 melee attack, 28 defense. Um, yeah, camels. Um, <laughs> I've got to say, camels aren't my favorite thing in Rome Total War. But if you do like camels, there's camel warriors here for you guys. Camel warriors. I just don't like how slow they are. That's, that's why I don't like them. But... Uh, they do get horse archers, which is pretty darn awesome. So if you want to be OP and go full raider, then you can do with the horse archers, which is pretty cool. Right, on to our next nation, guys. Nation number three, Orange South. So on to faction number three, guys. And we have the other Arabian faction of Saba, starting with eight settlements in and around the southern tip of Arabia. They've got a couple of settlements down here on the coast as well, and actually border the Ptolemies at their colony down in the south. But let's hear a little bit of history on the Saba. They were a faction in southern Arabia, of course, mainly a maritime power that controlled a lot of trade that was going around the Horn of Africa. The Sabaeans were the most powerful state out of many in the area. Other competitors such as Katarban, Minea, and Himyar would also rise and fall. But in 270 BC, it was the Sabaeans that held the most power. Their lands extend southwest and even have an outpost in Ethiopia whom they enjoyed good relations with. 
Historically, Augustus sent an expedition to conquer the area, but he ultimately failed and they were turned back. That's because they came to fight with uh, Cleopatra at Actium. So Augustus wasn't very happy and he wanted to punish them. That's why they uh, sent an expedition down here to get rid of them. But yeah, a cool nation down here in the southern tip of Africa, bordering the Ptolemy, uh, sorry, not Africa, Arabia, bordering the Ptolemies, which is really cool. And a really kind of unique starting situation that you don't really have with many other factions. There's not many factions around you apart from the Ptolemies and our next faction <laughs> over there that we're going to reveal soon. So you really do have free reign to really just do whatever you want. Your capital's over here in Marib, and you start with a decent army. But as we can see, again, it's a very light army as well. And a lot of these rebel settlements have some pretty darn big, uh, big uh, garrisons in them. But don't be worried too much, because they're all garrisons of similar troops to yours. So you should be okay against them. So really, it's up to you. This one's a very open-ended prospect. You can go and conquer the whole of Arabia if you want. You can go and conquer all of Arabia. You can go down the coast. You can even go into Ethiopia, um, around the Horn of Africa, down into Africa as well, and go and take a few settlements around here as well, which is pretty cool. But really, if you want to make the most impact, is getting all these coastal settlements is going to be huge for you. Because as soon as you do, you're going to be trading a lot, making a lot of money. But it's just going to be a long way and a long slog for you to get to fight anyone else. So it's up to you. It's a really open-ended faction, which I do like. You've got plenty of options on what you want to do. And I think late game, honestly, the AI with this faction is going to have a field day. They are going to be conquering land around here. So late game, these guys might actually be a very big challenge for you late game. But let's have a look at their roster. So, uh, again, it's pretty much the same roster as the Nabatea. Again, these rosters are all going to get remastered at some point as well, guys. But they don't get any horse archers, so slightly weaker than the Nabataeans. Uh, but they do get that unique unit of the Sabaean, should, should I say, the Sabaean Noble Infantry. But it's very similar to the Nabataean Noble Infantry as well. But a nice unit nonetheless, like we talked about. Decent stats. It's just not quite going to be good enough to really beat back late game Hellenistic units. So you're going to uh, you're going to want to do a much conquest early game if you want these guys to be successful. Again, they're going to be very very strong early game if you take all these settlements. But when you get against the Ptolemies, try and blitz them as quick as possible because open field battles aren't really going to be your real um, sort of overwhelming skill there, unless you're really good with skirmisher-based armies, which not a huge amount of people love skirmisher-based armies, but if you do, you do have decent options in that regard. And again, mainly camels as your cavalry. So if you're a camel lover, you will love this faction. I personally, like I've said, don't really like camels uh, too much, but pretty much all your, all your cavalry here is camels. So... Uh, if you like camels and like playing with camels. Oh no, they do get camel archers, should I say. Camel archers. So they do get a form of horse archers, but just a slow one. <laughs> so a slow form of horse archers. So that's fine. Uh, but yeah, a really cool addition to the game. Very unique starting point. Very unique um, uh, play style because you can just do what you want with this faction. You can really take your time if you want to. Uh, but I would recommend going and conquering straight away so you get your deficit down. But yeah, like I say, that might be changed come release. But yeah, go and take what you want and go and have a bit of fun with this faction. But let's get on to the fourth faction. A faction that many of you have been asking for. And a faction that I think you'll all be very, very excited by. I'll see you there. So here we are, guys, with our last faction, and of course it is Kush. No, not that type of Kush, not Kali Kush, Ethiopian Kush, which in my opinion is even better, Ethiopian Kush. So let's hear a little bit about the history of them. They're an ancient kingdom, of course, formed out of the old Nubian kingdoms of the past. Kush is sometimes referred to as Moro. Uh, but it was an Ethiopian kingdom south of Egypt in the Upper Nile. 
Upper Nile region. Of course, this is the Lower Nile up here. This is the Upper Nile down here. I don't know why, but it's just the ancient, <laughs> the ancient way of describing the two. Well, I guess it's Upper because it's higher in terms of uh, its, uh, its relief. Uh, but yeah. Of course, in their time frame, in the time frame of the mod, they are quite a powerful uh, civilization, having their own civilization, social structures, and military service. They fought on many occasions with the Ptolemies, but were never conquered by them. One thing to note, though, just before the mod starts, the uh, Ptolemies have just made gains down the Nile against them in a war in the two 70s so they weren't fully conquered by them but there was a bit of give and take there with the ptolemies as well a roman expedition did see considerable military success against them but they also didn't fully conquer the nation of course and they were continued to be a thorn in the side of the romans until the rise of axum in the south of course a really cool faction i'm very very happy to see them in the only real eastern african faction because of course the ptolemies are hellenic uh the saba are arabian culture i believe so kush has its own culture as well as we can see down here it has the ethiopian culture which is really cool indeed now you start with 11 settlements so pretty nice all of which are pretty much along the nile down here uh, and you do have a few rebel settlements around you, like Boron over here, um, and, you know, a couple up there. But they're very spread out and very far away. We've got the ones down here. So what I would recommend you doing, if you do play as them, it just goes straight for the Ptolemies. These, uh, these lands down here are very weak. They don't really have any garrisons, as we can see. Not many, anyway. Small garrisons. So what you want to do is just start conquering up the Nile. And you're going to do a really good job of that because they're not going to be able to put up much resistance, like I say. So really good uh, sort of starting position because you've not really got anyone to worry about apart from the Ptolemies. But don't be put off by the Ptolemies' might and size because they're going to be too busy fighting the Seleucids, fighting in Anatolia, all that sort of thing. Fighting the Nabatea now like we've seen in Kyrene. So really go for them and I think you'll make a lot of money very 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 quickly do remember that the nile is navigable guys so if you haven't seen the map showcase video we went through this take a check of that in the description take a look at that in the description down below but the nile is navigable all the way from elephantine so if you get to elephantine few settlements to get through first you can actually sail a ship all the way up the nile and go for alexandria if you want which is really 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 cool so that is one feature that you really want to uh, keep an eye on with this faction definitely really cool faction do like them a lot of course they're spread out but do go for the ptolemies because the rebel settlements they're just not going to be worth it and you can see they've got big garrisons as well so go for the easy uh, the easy fight with the ptolemies i know that sounds kind of counterintuitive but go for that instead their capital over here is Moreau starts as a large town you do have a lot of large towns and towns uh, so you start with a decent amount of money coming in so not too bad on the economy either and you start with a, a decently sized army in Moreau which includes towered forest elephants as well which is pretty nice so yeah keep those elephants coming that's pretty cool in terms of the unit roster not exactly hugely strong and Quite limited, of course. Uh, I believe they might have reforms because I believe they get an one or two extra units than this. But yeah, not hugely strong. Very weak. Kushite spearmen, not great. Not going to do well against um, Hoplites. But they do have a bonus in desert. We've got the Kushite axemen, which are actually better than you think because they've got an armor-piercing primary weapon, which is pretty cool indeed. Uh, and the Kushite infantry, again, better than the stats... Uh, the stats portray because they're actually armor piercing as well. So 14 melee attack armor piercing is pretty strong to be honest guys. So not exactly a bad unit roster. Um, but yeah, that Kushite guard infantry again, armor piercing primary weapon. And of course you can get plenty of mercenary elephants if you want down in this region, which is really cool as well. So you can, uh, you know, get some elephants on the battlefield against them. You do get your general's bodyguard. And you get your um, standard light cavalry as well. But no archers for this faction 
as of yet. Of course, those units will be all remastered and there'll be a new roster for them going forward at some point in the future. But yeah, a really cool faction nonetheless. Great start. Again, very unique start. And go for the Ptolemies from the back. And I don't think they'll be expecting it. That should be quite fun. Do you actually start a war with the Ptolemies? No, you start neutral. So you'll have to declare war on them. But that'll give you time to get your army to the front line anyway. So guys, I think we're there. I think we've showcased those four new factions. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Of course, remember, they're all placeholder factions. They're just there to sort of fill spaces in the map and uh, offer a basis for them going forward to be remastered. They will all get remastered in the future, so don't worry if you don't see an extensive roster uh, for them just yet, but that will come in time, guys. So remember, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, make sure you get ready for more RAS weekends, and tomorrow we go on a deep dive down the rabbit hole of the map-making process with Jorilaf, um, talking about how he made this stunning and massive map. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe. And I will see you all again on the next video.